Hey, superstars, it's your bestie, Scott, and this is our February recap. I have been focusing on the art lately, which I should be doing, but I still think it's important to do one of these recaps every month. So uh, for this month, we got a bunch of those VR thingies to do. Uh, I've got a couple new things in the shop to show you and uh, contest win and some care packages. So let's do it. My bestie Robert over at Commenting Collector is celebrating 200 subs and he wants to see those items we have in our collections that we've resisted opening. The first thing that came to mind was a pack of 1981 Donruss that I've had since I was a little kid, but I looked for it for about an hour and I couldn't find it. Uh, these are a little newer than the stuff Robert wants to see, but I have this box of Topps Kids. I want to complete this set, but these boxes are a little tougher to come by and I haven't dug into it because I had to pay up for it a little bit. Uh, what else? Non-sports for Robert. I've got a box of Dinosaurs Attack cards. Another set that I'd like to put together someday in the same vein as Mars Attacks. Maybe I'll open these someday or maybe I'll pick up another box somewhere. Who knows? And then I've got these packs of Little Shop of Horrors cards and Cindy Lopper cards gifted to me by Pepino Man. Hope you dig these, Robert. Congrats on 200, sir. My best bud Rick at Rocket Rick J18 is celebrating a year on YouTube and 300 subs, and he wants to hear about a card we've picked up because we were inspired by another YouTuber. I've got quite a few of those, but this is one of my favorites, and I told this story before, so I apologize. Anyway, I first met Chris from Missouri at the 2022 National in Atlantic City, and this was right before he started making videos, but we were sitting at a bar, and he pulls out a beautiful 1949 Bowman Larry Doby rookie. After holding that card, I knew I had to move it to the top of my shortlist, but it's kind of pricey for me, so it took a little while. Cut to a year later, this Doby rookie was a high priority for me at the 2023 National, but I'd have to find it early before I spent any money. 15 minutes in, I spot this guy. It's hard to spend most of my budget 15 minutes into a five-day show, but just as I was thinking it over, Chris walks by and he asks me what I'm looking for, and I show him this Doby, and he says, go for it, and he even helped me out a little bit by paying me back for a little project I helped him out with. So that's my Larry Doby rookie story, and it makes me think of Chris every time I look at it. And here is a 1928 Yingling George Uli. I'm showing this because when Rick announced this contest, he used a 1927 York Carmel George Uli as his example, which is essentially the same card with a different back, and I thought it was a cool coincidence. And speaking of cool coincidences... My bestie Brian at Hodges 1455 also used a 1928 Tharps Ice Cream George Uli to announce his VR, another version of the same card with a different back. How cool is that? Um, he wants to hear about good hitting pitchers, and these weren't necessarily good hitting pitchers, but I love the stories about these guys. First one is Joe Necro, who had exactly one major league home run in his career, and he hit it off of his brother Phil. And another memorable one, for me anyway, was the 1992 All-Star Game. American League pitchers didn't get a chance to hit often in those days, even in the All-Star game, because coaches really tried to give all the position players a chance to play. But manager Tom Kelly had used his entire bench, and a pitcher had to go up to bat. And it was my guy, Charlie Nagy, who shocked the world with an infield single, and then he came around to score even. I think he's still the only pitcher to get a hit in the All-Star game in the designated hitter era. I remember this vividly, and I was so proud. So there you go, Brian. Hope you dig these. My BFF Four Leaf, he simply wants to see a tabletop display. And honestly, my brain is fried right now, so here's a bunch of Don Mossy cards. You're welcome. And finally, my bestie Dan at Old Sarge Collects, who just did a 200 sub contest, is now celebrating 300 subs, and he wants to hear about our two favorite teams and show cards representing that. Obviously, my favoritest team in the whole wide world ever are the Indians slash Naps slash Guardians, simply because I grew up with them. You know, they're my hometown team and they're family, you know, and you never turn your back on family. When times are bad, they need your love and support. And when times are good, you're like super proud. 
Probably my favorite Indians card is the 1959 Topps Destruction Crew. You've got two historic baseball pioneers in Larry Doby and Minnie Minoso, and then Cleveland favorite Rocky Colavito, who kind of personifies the team. He loved the city and the fans, but he was mistreated and traded away by bad management. And then he was someone who might have been a Hall of Famer if he had played in the same city for his entire career, but he was overlooked as he bounced around the Midwest playing second fiddle to Al Kaline in Detroit and playing for an awful Kansas City A's team before coming back to Cleveland, albeit best is prime for a little bit of redemption. My second favorite team isn't as easy. I tend to low-key root for teams my friends root for. I have a lot of Pirates friends, a lot of Mets friends, a lot of Yankees friends, but I won't go that far. But anyway, as a kid, I was a huge, huge, huge Ryan Sandberg fan. So the Cubs were my team 1B. And my favorite Cubs card is the 1983 Topps Ryan Sandberg rookie. So yeah, historically, the Cubs could be considered my second favorite team, but not so much after a certain World Series. Uh... Hope that works for you, Dan. Keep up the good work, dude. Earlier this month, I announced that I was quitting my day job and moving forward as a full-time sports ball artist. And uh, you guys have been unbelievably supportive. And I really can't thank you enough. Uh, Every one of you that's ordered a t-shirt or uh, reached out about a commission or just offered a word of support. It's It's been awesome, awesome, awesome. And I feel so lucky to have so many great friends behind me in this. So just thank you so much. I think it's important to keep you guys up to date with what's going on with the business. Uh, new stuff in the Etsy shop, uh, events and happenings or anything else I've got up my sleeve. Uh, first, I've got a new t-shirt available. I've turned this awesome little Manco card into a t-shirt. Mostly because I love it, but hopefully some of you dig it too. Um, What else? I'm also offering blankets with this design and one with the Decades design. And I've added Piedmont and Polar Bear hats to the store. And I'm also considering uh, starting an eBay store with all this stuff as well, just to possibly expand my organic audience. Also, I've started a countdown to opening day, which I'm really excited about. The theme is who I would draw if I was doing Diamond King's art. So it's sort of artistic role play. But uh, every day I'm going to draw one player from a different team. And then I'm posting the doodle videos at 7 p.m. Eastern on all of my social medias. And I'm also uh, posting the original art in the Etsy shop. And hopefully that'll make me a bajillion dollars. But my math may be a little bit off on that. Recently, my bestie John at 3D80s Kid held a contest about what we might be obsessive about, and I was a winner. So this note says, Hi Scott, congrats, enjoy this non-Cleveland card, your best friend John. And John sent me a 1957 Topps Roy Campanella. And look at those handsome fellas. This was really neat because I got this just as I was finishing this campy painting that I did for Jesse. So that was a great little keepsake for that project. Thanks, John. I think this may be my last Christmas card. This one's from my BFF, Alex, from Jay's Mix. To my bestie and family, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, bestie Alex. And Alex sent over Jeff Shaw, the Beebs, and Greg Swindell. Very cool, Alex. Thanks, buddy. This one's from my bestie, Mookie Chilson, and I have to get out the little Mossy TV that he sent me a while back because it's insanely awesome. Moo! Blue-green tape? Weird. Uh, just in case, and Mookie sent over a couple of Louis Medina rookies, and you're probably thinking why, but Mookie did a video lately talking about the first MLB home run that he saw at a game, which led me to dig out the scorecard from the first game that I went to and see who hit the first home run that I witnessed, and even though the Indians lost to the Blue Jays on my birthday in 1988, the first homer I saw was from Louis Medina here. Very cool, Mookie. Thanks for being so awesome, buddy. That's all I got for you today. Big thanks to Commenting Collector, Rocket Rick J18, Hedges1455, Four Leaf, and Old Sarge Collects for the fun VRs. Thanks to 3D80s Kid for the contest win, and thanks to Jay's Mix and Mookie Chilson for the care packages. And of course, thank you guys for watching and all of your awesome, awesome support. Now go find a better video to watch, and we'll see you real soon.